In this video, I'll show you a few options that we have for wiring both single pole and three-way light switches. Whether or not a white neutral wire is required at all switch boxes or just some of them, and a new 2023 code update that'll change how we wire light switches from now on. Let's start out looking at single pole switches and then we'll move on to the three ways. There are two methods we use when wiring single pole switches. The first method is called a switch loop. This is when we run our feed cable to the light fixture box and then send a two wire loop down to the switch. In the past, this was usually done with a two wire cable like 14-2 Romex. We would connect both the black wire and the white wire to the light switch. But since the white wire is not being used as a neutral in this case, it would need to be re-identified as a hot wire. This was usually done with electrical tape. Using this method, the hot wire comes down from the feed at the light box. It goes through the switch and then back up to the light box where it's connected to the light fixture. The neutral wire would stay up here at the light box where it's needed for the light fixture and not make its way down to the light switch. But two wire switch loops using cable like Romex are no longer code compliant for new installations. I'll tell you why and I'll show you how you can still use cable switch loops and remain code compliant. But first, let's take a look at the second wiring method commonly used for wiring single pole switches. This is the way I wire them and we'll call it the feed through method. In this case, we take our feed cable to the switch box first and then another two wire cable up to the light box. We connect our two white neutral wires together in the switch box which will carry the neutral up to the light box where it's needed for the light fixture. The black hot wire from the feed and the black switch leg to the light will connect to the switch. And then obviously the ground wires will connect together with a tail to the switch and then continue up to the light box. Now this is a code compliant wiring method for single pole switches. So why was our two wire switch loop a code violation? Because it didn't leave a neutral wire in the single pole switch box and they are required there. Back in 2011, Article 4042 of the NEC was updated to require a neutral wire at light switches. The reason for the update was many of the new lighting controls and smart switches were being introduced, which required a neutral wire to keep the electronics functioning. When people were replacing existing light switches with the new devices that required a neutral, they would often find they had no neutral wire in the switch box, so the device would not work. There were five exceptions to 4042 and the 2011 code, and exception number two was the issue. The exception stated that a neutral wasn't required where the box enclosing the switch is accessible for the installation of an additional or a replacement cable without removing the finished materials. So this meant if you could fish a wire down from the attic or up from the basement or crawl space, a neutral wire would not be required for the original installation. So many light switches were still being installed with no neutral wire. But in the newly updated 2023 National Electrical Code, exception number two was removed. Now a neutral wire is required at a switch box, making that two wire switch loop a code violation. Up next, I'm going to show you how we can still legally use switch loops. Two methods for wiring three-way and four-way switches and whether or not a neutral wire is required for those as well. But first, I want to take a minute to introduce you to AG1, the sponsor of today's video. Like many of you, I'm not getting any younger and supporting my overall health, especially during the cold seasons, can be quite complex. Managing stress and cognition along with supporting digestive health and immune system are essential steps to supporting overall health. Now, I just turned 60 and I was looking for a daily foundational nutrition supplement that covers my overall health and AG1 covers all the bases. Managing stress and cognition along with supporting digestive health and immune systems are essential steps to supporting our overall health. Instead of addressing just one area of the body, foundational nutrition supplements raise our baseline health. AG1 supports the brain, the gut, and the immune system. I've only been drinking AG1 for a couple weeks now, but I really like it. It tastes good and I find it to be very filling. There were three things that I was looking for before I found AG1. 
I wanted something to help with my immune defense because I don't like getting sick. Something to help me stay focused and have plenty of energy throughout the day. And something to help with stress. AG1 has me covered on all three. The last thing I like about AG1 is it's a simple daily habit. One scoop or travel pack of AG1, eight ounces of water every day, and that's it. Good stuff. Go to drinkag1.com slash backyardmain or scan the QR code to get your free welcome kit. That includes a canister, the shaker, a year supply of vitamin D3K2, and five extra travel packs of AG1. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Okay, let's get back into the content. You may be wondering, how do we get a neutral wire to the switch box with a switch loop? The solution? We'll have to run a three wire from the light down to the switch box from now on. We can still run our power to the light box, but now we'll connect our black hot wire to the black wire down to the switch. Our red wire back up from the switch will connect to the light fixture. The neutral and ground wires will connect as usual, but the neutral will now be going down to the switch box as well. At the light switch box, we'll connect our red wire and our black wire to the light switch. The neutral wire will either be capped off if not needed, or connected to the smart switch or lighting control if that's what we're using. So is the neutral wire required at three-way and four-way switch boxes as well? It is, well, kind of, I'll explain. There are actually four methods to wire three-way switches. The Chicago three-way, which has been illegal for decades, the California three-way, which is not acceptable in all areas. Then we have the standard method and the dead-end three-way, and I'll show you those right now. Let's go to the whiteboard. Okay, let's start out with the standard method because it's the most common and the most widely accepted way to wire three-way switches. So on the board, we have our power. We have our first three-way, we'll call it switch one. Our second three-way, switch two and our light. Our first switch will be line because that's where the power will come in and we'll call our second switch leg because that'll take the switch leg up to the light. Then we'll run a 12-2 cable from our power source to our first three-way switch and the black wire will connect to our power source and come down and hit the black common screw on our first three-way switch and we'll run a second 12-2 from our light box to our second three-way switch. And our black common wire will come from our light fixture over into the common screw on our second three-way switch. Then we'll run a 12-3 cable between our two three-way switches. The red and the black wires in the 12-3 are going to be our travelers. So our red wire will go from the gold screw on one switch to the gold screw on the other, traveler number one. Then the black wire will go from the gold screw on one switch to the gold screw on the other, traveler number two. Now our 12-2 wire coming down from power also has a neutral wire in it. Now since I can't use a white marker on a white board, we'll use a dotted line. So our neutral wire is going to come down and go to switch box number one but it's not going to connect to the switch. And our neutral wire from the light fixture is going to come down and it's going to be in our second switch box, but also not connect to the switch. Our 12-3 that we have going between our two switches also has a white wire in it. So that white wire We'll carry our neutral wire between our two switches. And these are going to splice together in our two switch boxes, like so. Let me show you how this would work. Let's cross these little pieces out on our switch. So our power comes down, it goes into the first switch, and we'll say that the switch is in this position right now. And it goes across the black traveler here, and we'll say that this switch is in this position. Then it goes up to our light. Then our current travels through the light fixture back on our neutral wire, back to the source. 
and the light would be on. So if we go to this first switch and we switch it to the other position, now the power comes down, goes to the second switch, but it's open here, so it can't get to the light. So what if we needed to control our lights from more than two locations? So we just stick a four-way in the middle. So we'd have a three-wire cable between three-way number one and our four-way, and a three-wire cable between three-way number two and our four-way. So our two travelers would connect just like before. Our black traveler here. That would connect from the gold screw on the three-way to the gold screw on the four-way. And our red traveler here, same thing between the gold screw. There is no black screw on our four-way switch. And then our black here between the four-way and our other three-way. And the red between our four-way and the other three-way. And then our neutral wire would connect in this box as well. So now the circuit would work exactly like it did with the three ways, but now we have a four way in the middle. Notice with this method, we have a neutral wire at every switch box location. So we're gonna be okay if we ever wanna install a switch that requires one, and we're code compliant. Okay, now let's look at a dead end three way, and you'll see why we call it a dead end three way in just a minute. We still have our power source, our two three way switches, and our light. Like on our standard three-way, we run a 12-2 cable from our power source to our first three-way. We'll connect the black wire to our power source, which will connect to the black common screw on our three-way. But this time, another 12-2 will come from the light fixture, or the light box, to our first three-way switch. So our black wire will come down from the light into the switch box here but not connect to the switch. So like before, we'll have a three wire that goes between our two three-way switches. Our red traveler will connect to the gold screw on the first three-way and go to the gold screw on the second one. We'll jump over this wire here. And our black traveler will come from the gold screw on this three-way, jump over that wire, and connect to the gold screw on our other three-way. But now we have to get our switch leg from this three-way back to this switch box to connect to our light. All we have left is our white wire and the three wire that goes between the two three-ways. So we'll re-identify our white wire as a hot wire. I'm gonna use a blue marker in this case, but it's a white wire re-identified. So we're gonna go from our black screw and we're gonna go over here and we're not gonna to connect to this making a mess here. We're not gonna to connect to this other switch. We're gonna go up and we're gonna to connect to that wire right there, which goes up to the light. So then we'll have our neutral wire coming down from the light, dotted line here. We'll go right through these same loops here. And then we'll jump over that. We'll go over to the first switch box. And our neutral from our power will come down here over to our first switch box. And that'll, those two neutral wires will connect together in that switch box. Now this works pretty much the same as our last three-way. Power will come down. We'll say it goes through the switch like that. Goes across on our black wire. Goes across this switch comes on our blue wire, we'll call this our re-identified white wire, goes back to switch box number one, and then goes up to our light. Then the neutral carries the current back from the light, back through this switch box here, and up to our power source and completes the circuit. Now the reason we call this a dead end three way is in this box here you can see that the circuit cannot continue after that. All we have is switch power and there's no neutral. Looking at switch box one, we do have a neutral wire, so we're good to go here. But switch two, nope, we have no neutral wire over there. But article 4042 in the National Electrical Code also says where multiple switches control the same lights, a neutral wire is only required at one of the switches. So since we have a neutral wire in this first switch box, this is going to be a code compliant method. 
Some electrical inspectors may have an issue with re-identifying your white wire due to size limitations in the code, but I've found that most inspectors will let that go. Keep that in mind though when you're deciding on which method you're going to use to wire your three-way switches. I want to thank you all for watching and I want to thank AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Remember to check out the link in the description to try it out for yourself. I'll link some other content for you to watch next right here. I'm John from Backyard, Maine. Thanks for watching.